Well, hello everyone and welcome to IR Photo Tours. Question, can you get great images of deep space objects without using a telescope? Find out after this. Hello everyone, my name is Ian and for those that are new to my channel, I discuss and review just about anything and relating to photography and equipment. I also cover my favourite genre, landscape photography and travel. If you like my channel, can I ask that you consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification? Thank you very much. Okay, so today I thought I'll go through how I got this shot behind me of the Orion Nebula and the Running Man, which is what is above. What I used and how I processed the image. I want to go over the deep space object that, uh, objects that are easily photographed for anyone who already owns a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. If you want to dip into your feet, uh, dip your feet into deep space photography, but do not want to go down that slippery road of expensive telescopes and all that goes with them, including scopes, trackers, and all sorts, then you're in the right place. We are facing uncertain times at the moment. And from what I have seen, astrophotography has hit a new high, which means buying anything astro is hard to find at the moment. So, I'm only going to use what I've got in my kit bag other than a few other extra items. They are the light pollution filter because I live in the city. That, that is from Astronomic and a dew heater as well, which is a Kuhu, I believe it is. I'll put the links down below. I did already own a Star Tracker, but the Star Trackers are from, uh, this one I have is an Ioptron and is just over 300 pounds. I do feel like I want to upgrade though and the upgrade would be to the uh, Sky Watcher Star Adventurer Pro, which is priced at just over 300 pounds as well. But with this one, um, it's a better option. It's a, it's a better option for longer zoom lenses as well as wide angle lenses. Other than these items, you will need a DSLR, of course, or a mirrorless camera, cropped or full frame uh, sensor, a long focal length lens, such as the Canon 100-400mm f4.5 to 5.6. A mid focal length uh, between 50mm to 70mm. And a wide angle lens around about 16mm to 24mm. They are all the focal lengths that you would uh, probably use in, in the astrophotography. All these lenses should be pretty fast apertures, anywhere between 5.6 or less, or faster, should I say. Uh, this image of Orion Nebula was taken using the full frame Canon EOS R and a Canon 100 to 400 millimeter f 4.5 to 5.6 at 400 millimeters. Um, it's the Mark II version with a light pollution filter on. Uh, on a tripod, of course, and the Ioptron Star Tracker, which is the most basic Star Tracker that, uh, that there is, and I seem to be doing okay with it. You'll also need an intervalometer um, as well. A ball head was attached to the Star Tracker, so you can easily move around uh, the night sky to slew to your subject. So that's quite important. I, I, I polar aligned by firstly pointing the tracker north, then adjusted to the degrees I needed in height, according to where I am. Norfolk is 52 degrees to point at the Polaris. Just get your tripod level first before trying to align to the North Star or Polaris as it is called. Then it will make it much easier to find. Once aligned and level, you are now ready to slew your camera and lens to the desired subject. And for me, that is uh, the Orion Nebula. 
Orion can be easily found by looking firstly on the web based Stellarium. It's an app which is a great tool for finding subjects in the night sky. Also at what time they will be at their highest point. It is important that they are at their highest point because there is, there is cleaner air at that area of the sky. The horizon will have a, a lot of atmospheric rubbish and, and heat waves and all sorts. For, uh, for example, your end image will not be anywhere near as clean as what it would be if it was um, really up high in the sky. Camera and lens pointing at Orion Nebula and the polar alignment achieved, we are ready to set up the intervalometer. At this point, it is a little guesswork to get the correct optimum setting. So for me, I found the best results in the end for this particular shoe was uh, was a, was one minute or 60 seconds uh, exposure time with a gap between exposures of five seconds to call the sensor, which makes sense because you are taking a lot of shots in one, one sitting. It gives time for the data transfer as well, then set how many shots you want. So I, I set mine for 100 images. ISO was set in camera at uh, 1600 ISO. I found this worked very, very well and let the camera take its shots while I went and got the most important piece of equipment there is in this astrophotom astrophotography. And that is, a nice cup of coffee to keep me awake. Yeah, a YouTube. After a few hours, the clouds rolled in and uh, I, well, basically I hoped I got enough images. Um, it turned out I got 40 images that I could use for stacking together in Starry, Sty, Starry Sky Stacker, which is a Mac-based app and works well for the job it's intended to do. Uh, before stacking, I put all the raw images into Lightroom and uh, highlight, highlighted the ones I wanted to stack. Uh, you'll notice that the light pollution filter has a blue color cast. So just click the eyedropper and click on the dark part of the image uh, and there you go. Uh, basically it's done. And there you have your colors. So the, the, the natural colors of those nebulas are a very red color, and that, that, that's depicted here. Just do the tweaks you need here, but don't go too mad at this stage. So with all the images highlighted, I use the Auto Sync, which is a great tool, so use that. Um, so anything you adjust on one image, for example, it will transfer to all the other, uh, others automatically. Uh, and now to export and make sure when you export to have a new folder or uh, I, I tend to put it onto my uh, desktop and uh, I'll put all the files into a new folder on the desktop. Um, I tend to uh, export them in TIFF, so a TIFF format and that way um, they will retain all the information in those particular files. Once this is done, you're ready to stack your images in Starry Star Stacker. This part is simple and the program will do its job perfectly, and only accepting the best images into the stack, leaving the poor images out. Now that's done, um, you, you have a once that's done, you have a final stacked image. Once you've done that, you can then just play with them in back in Lightroom or back into Photoshop and uh, edit to your heart's content. Um, until you get a good end result. Okay, so that covers this this one nebula, um, but there are there are so many more you can get good results from uh, from from a DSLR or mirrorless full frame or crop sensor. Let's go for a few now, shall we? Okay, so we've covered the Orion Nebula with a 100 millimeter to 400 millimeter lens. Just to note. That nebula is 13,600 light years away. That's pretty cool. The horse's head nebula, same lens. Again, so the horse's head nebula with the same 100 to 400 mil lens. If you want to get the horse's head, running man and Orion nebula, then a 100 mil lens is, is perfect for that. Um, now, if you want to go further and you if you want to go wider, 
uh, then the, you're going to get the Running Man, Horse's Head, Beetlejuice, M78 with the head uh, with with the head nebula, all of which are in Barnyard Loop, which is at the constellation area there. This is all very pleasing. Uh, this is all a very pleasing image. Getting lots and lots of different nebulas there, and it's a really good image, really good image. And then you get that nice red arc at the bottom. Uh, which is all part and parcel of another nebula. And you'll get this with a 15 millimeter lens. So get your 50, nifty 50 out because it's an F1.8. Um, if you get it on a crop sensor, then you're looking around about, oof, dare I say, about 60, 70, 70-ish 70, uh, 70 uh, millimeters. Um, or you can get your 24 to 70 F2.8 out if you have one on a full frame camera and that'll give you the same effect. All of these images are in and around the Orion constellation and are, would, is really a pleasing effect. These targets are in our night sky in autumn, winter, um, you know, autumn and winter, so are the easiest to photograph. Uh, North American Nebula is another easy one to, to get and can be taken with a 100 millimeter lens. Um, M31, or the Andromeda Galaxy taken with a 540 millimeter lens, this particular shot behind you. Uh, focal length, uh, the focal length was 540 millimeters, as I said, but can be taken with a 300 millimeter uh, lens as well. Uh, the M31 is 2.5 million light years from Earth. Wow, that is awesome. That is amazing. And it is our biggest galaxy with, with, uh, with the Milky Way being the second biggest, of course. Uh, that leads me on to the most photographed of all, the Milky Way itself, and uh, where a huge amount of these uh, nebula and deep spa space objects, including the M31, reside. Uh, the best results I have found for getting a, a good Milky Way is the, the Star Tracker. Taken, take the uh, Milky Way with the Star Tracker on and you'll get cracking results. But you can take great images without the trackers as well if you have a fast lens such as the Sigma 16mm f1.4 uh, lens which is a, I, I used for this image in mid-May when it was perfect for a lone Milky Way panoramic shot. This shot consisted of eight shots stitched together to make a panoramic shot. The naked eye you could physically see the arch in the Milky Way itself at that time of the year. Okay, so everyone, I'm going to leave it there for now until uh, until next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave your comments down below. As always, I'll reply to you all. And for now, it has been a lovely old job.